Under here, I've got the graphical filter. When I select here, uh, it brings up this tool. This is to create it. Here is the terrain filter manager. That is how we're going to identify each of these elements on what to extract. Okay. So if I select the terrain filter manager, it brings up this dialog box. Okay. They made it handy for you. Bentley made it handy that you can get it there. If you want, you can actually go straight over here to miscellaneous and select graphical filter manager. It will bring up the same stuff. So however you get there, that's what you want to do. So under our filters, I'm going to right click. I'm going to say create filter. I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it breaks. And just keep in mind, you know, breaks, break line, whatever. This is just the name. How it gets extracted, the important part, is here under feature type. Okay. So like I said, we had break lines, we had spot elevations, and then we had voids, right? So I'm going to create a break. Now we need to go ahead and identify what items are going to be created as uh, break lines. So if I hover over here, PDTM break line, I got paved curb. Okay, so I'm going to say edit filter. There's a multiple ways of doing it through color, through level, however you want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and select level and I'm going to select all the items that are break lines and in our case it's going to be all of these with the exception of the spot elevations which are mass points and the voids which are obscured areas. I'm going to take all of those add it over here to the right hand side you should have a little number here that tells you how many items you have that we're going to be filtering. So I'm going to say finish and there it is. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and create a new filter. Okay. I also want to extract something called spots and I car sometimes we call it mass points in photogrammetry. So I'm going to go ahead and extract those as spots. Remember, this is just the name. It's more important how you extract it. I'm going to say edit filter and then I'm going to go to levels and select the mass point level and add it over. Okay say finish so now I've got my breaks I've got my uh, mass points the last thing I want to do is the voids right so these are called obscured areas so let me go ahead and right click and create a new filter obscured and then under obscured I'm gonna pull down here and extract these as voids now there's three different types of voids there's the drape void uh, there's the regular void and break void. Okay, what we want to use is the break void. So at TextDot, or you know, we use basically break voids. That basically means that. In fact, let me go ahead and show you real quick. If I come over here and I take a look at this, this line is actually digitized on the ground, and that's the way that that should be done, right? So you can kind of see there how it is. So when we use break void what happens is it treats this line as a break line and will triangulate to the outside and not allow anything to kind of come through if we did a drape i'm sorry that was a break void a drape void this could actually be collected at zero it could be a 2d line for for all all purposes and what happens is it creates the 3d and goes ahead and triangulates through and all this stuff and then it comes in and cookie cuts like a cookie cutter and a, and cuts this part out. The regular void will actually use the DTM that's actually in here and allow the program to triangulate through here. And then once it's done, then it will go ahead and clip it out. Anyway, that's probably more information than y'all need to know. Let me go back to the filter group and get finished with that filters, right? So there's the obscured. I have yet to go ahead and identify those. Let me go to edit filter. I'm going to go to levels and then obscured. Okay, obscured area. I'm going to say add and finish. So now I've got all three of these. And now I need to combine these into a group. Okay, so I'm going to right click and create a filter group. In our case, we're going to call this photogrammetry. Okay. And now we need to identify what filters are going to be associated with this group. Okay, so I'm going to pull down. That's going to be our mass points and breaks. I'm going to show you this first before the obscured. And then I'm going to say finish. Okay, so I've completed fixing the filters and filter managers and that type of stuff. Now I want to come back here and make sure to create. So to actually select the group, I'm going to click the ellipse here, the three buttons. 
I'm going to go to the top and select the group. Okay. The edge method, there's a none uh, slivers that basically removes. We'll talk about this later. And you can adjust this later. You don't have to make the decision now. Uh, under feature definitions, I'm going to come over here under existing contours and triangles. I'm going to give the actual terrain model a name. I'm going to just call it photo. That's fine. And then I'm going to left through left click through my options. Left click, accept the data point, left click, and there it goes through and creates the triangles. So there's your surface, right? So if I come over here and select it, you'll notice over here, this is a uh, microstation element. And it also shows how it was actually created. In our case, it's this graphical filter. So if anything was to change with this, we could actually just update it and it would change. There's a lot of triangles out here. Uh, that comes from that edge method. So if I select it over here, right now it says none. If I change it to sliver, it will actually get rid of most of those triangles. It's internal to the program. It will get rid of any thin triangles, legs, and kind of do that for you. But normally what you're going to use is this max edge length. And so we'll give it a name. This is 328. Obviously, that kind of looks like it's from metric. Maybe 100 meters is actually 328. We're going to change that to, say, 150. Enter. And so you'll see how these things kind of get trimmed back. Uh, obviously it's it's a little bit less if I wanted to make sure to put triangles across here if I came in and did a measurement let me see drawing and then measure and I looked at that distance that's roughly about 450 there and this one is about oh my gosh yeah that one's about yeah close to 500 so if I change this option to 500 then it will triangulate through there now is that necessarily correct no, right? Because those are interpolated data. So I'm going to come back here and change it to something that you feel is manageable, maybe within 120, maybe 150 feet. Otherwise, we have to go out and get additional survey. Okay, so this is it, uh, the obscured area, right? We had a problem. This was here. Uh, we need to obscure this part, right? We created a filter. So let's go back to our filter group. So I'm going to go to terrain. I'm going to go graphical filter, however you want to get there. And I'm going to update my group. And I'm going to change that to also add obscured areas, the obscured filter. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to say finish. Well, I don't see it update. Well, you have to select it and then come over here and update from the source. So in our case, it is from the graphical filter. I'll select it and then that will update the filter there. And so there's our surface.